after this whole uh, heating process is carried out for about 85 to 90 degrees for uh, about uh, close to 45 minutes to 1 hour, you have a uh, box kept here. So, this was labeled, uh, labeled in this particular uh, uh, leveling plate inside the oven and you have quite uniform layer of PDMS uh, which is solidified on the top of these uh, these structures here which are made up of the laser machine PMMA surface ok. And so, you have now what you were looking for in, in you know we have actually we are trying to build two different layers of PDMS. This is actually a thinner layer on the top of this mold and uh, both are equally important for the field of microfluidics. So, this would be a thin layer PDMS. So, subsequently I will show you another step where you have to do a thick layer. Use uh, the normal paper cutter for the purpose of cleaving the mold box on all the sides. Remember this box actually is a sacrificial mold box. It has to be uh, at the end of the day, uh, it has to be a use and throw kind of a platform. So, we cleave all the corners of this box and uh, one thing which is important for me to tell you is that the PDMS uh, we is sticking to any surface uh, quite firmly, especially when it is get, get, get cured, it gets cured etcetera. And uh, in this case, because we did not treat the surface of the mold box with this mold uh, releasing agent, there is a tendency of the PDMS sides to stick to the side walls of the mold, mold box. So, one has to be extremely careful about removing this mold box and removing or extracting the, the molded PDMS along with the, the polymeric uh, structure which is inside, the PMMS structure laser machine which is inside. So, that uh, you can have uh, the, the sides or the edges of this whole stamp uncleaved ok. And uh, this is a very, uh, it has to be done very carefully to prevent any kind of cleaving action uh, or sticking action of the sides of the mold box with reference to the or with respect to the, the PDMS inner. So, you can see here the PDMS uh, being extracted very carefully uh, and wherever there is additional cutting to be done uh, and in fact, you know one can because that is why. Uh, the, the the box is designed in a manner which is always oversized than the uh, size of the individual die which is going to replicate the device ok. So, if need be some sides and edges can be cleaved off in any event they are going to be cleaved off later uh, once the extraction of the mold uh, and subsequently the retrieval of the replicated part happens from this particular setup. So, there is always a possibility that there is some kind of a infiltration of PDMS on the lower side of the, uh, the PMMA uh, mold. You remember when we did this fitment of the PMMA mold, uh, although we put a sort of a adhesive tape on the bottom, double sided tape on the bottom, still there is some gaps which are there and there is a possibility of the PDMS to go on the back side of that mold and when it gets cured, there is a rubbery membrane developed there also. So, one has to be careful about cleaving that. So, you have to really know very well which side is the pattern side ok. And then be careful uh, by removing every other thing on all the different sides like on the other surface for example, of the uh, PMMS uh, where uh, there is no pattern ok. So, that surface whatever film is formulated you should typically cleave off and those are all sacrificially used um, for realizing the most important which is uh, what the film that is formulated on the top of the pattern side of the PDMA ok. So, this is the complete PDMS chunk which is now cured. You can see that it is quite thick ok. And uh, the surface on which we wanted this uh, uh, microfluidic device to be embedded is actually the thinner surface side. And so, what we have to do is a slow retrieval of these uh, PMMA laser micro machine PMMA from the the PDMS from uh, the lower side. One has to be extremely slow in removing it because otherwise there may be a stiction. Uh, it has an irreversible seal which is developed on the surface and uh, so the stiction may be able to cause uh, damage to the device structure.
So, this is how now the device looks like, there is a thin film of the PDMS on the top of this surface, this is a thin uh, device, we will also subsequently show a thicker version later on, you can see that you can see the mold not being separated. So, the mold is on one side and the other side is infiltrated with PDM, the, the on the top of that featured size or patterned side of the mold, uh, there is a uh, rubberized PDMS which is left over. So, you can now separate the mold from that uh, PDMS in a very careful manner and uh, the thin layer of PDMS which is now replicated can come or can be retrieved from the top surface of the mold which is the pattern surface. So, the idea is whatever uh, features are embedded within this die size die that you now want to remove the, the PDMS, uh, the replicated PDMS from the surface of the mold. And uh, I just like to illustrate here that in the laser micro machine PMMS surface, there was a feature uh, which was actually uh, like a channel, uh, engraved a channel on the top of that PD, uh, the, uh, the PMMA. And we are now replicating that channel. So, whatever we will be getting on the top of this uh, PDMS surface will be a ridge. It will not be a channel, but will be a ridge because now the PDMS has infiltrated into the pattern and we are separating the rubber and get gotten rubberized. So, we are separating the rubberized PDMS from the pattern. So, it will have the same shape embedded like a ridge on the top of this PDMS layer. So, you can see this uh, layer of uh, PDMS being retrieved off the mold which has actually the embedded feature, the I, I would say the, the ridge like feature uh, of whatever was like in a uh, embedded inside the PMMA or on the top of the PMMA. So, it is exactly the inverse okay, of that embedded channel. Okay. So, this uh, film has now something coming out of the surface, projected out of the surface like a ridge uh, pattern of uh, which is a replica of the pattern which was there on the PDMS. Okay. So, again reiterating the PMMA surface which was laser machined earlier had a channel like depth in this particular shape and orientation and the PDMS surface which has come out has the exact ridge like uh, projected part of the surface coming out in those regions okay, as you can see here. Okay. So, this ridge is actually being further replicated now in another layer and that is why this process is called micro replication by double inversion. So, the first layer is the PMMA is the channel, okay. the replication or replicated layer is the ridge and this ridge is now again being replicated into a channel by using this ridge pattern on the PDMS after solidifying and heat curing the PDMS for some time okay, as a ridge which would be finally eventually. Uh, trying to take you know uh, or create a replica of a ridge which is again a back to channel. So, we are actually inverting the pattern once uh, building a negative pattern on the PDMS intermediate and then on the next step we are bringing another invert inversion of the pattern on the PDMS. So, we are essentially replicating a channel onto that surface. So, we will now uh, demonstrate another uh, very interesting uh, you know the, the portion where we will be doing the secondary level replication by the PDMS uh, film which has been extracted earlier with the ridge like pattern on the surface. You can see the ridge like pattern of the PDMS on the surface in this particular area. Okay. This again coming again, this is a channel, it is a embedded depth on the laser micro machine surface. This is the replica of that channel which is like a ridge or a projected out feature on this PDMS and the next layer would be again replicating this particular ridge which would again be a channel on the PDMS surface. So, the first thing now what we have to do is to sort of heat this PDMS using a hot plate to a temperature of above about uh, close to 200 degrees uh, Celsius where it becomes glassy okay? because you know it is highly porous PDMS otherwise is very porous on the surface and we want it to become glassy. So, that this mold which is being used for the next step for micro replication by double inversion, this mold should be able to again you know uh, be able to get separated very fast from the surface which it would itself replicate. So, we set up the temperature all the way to about close to 200 degrees to 202 degrees Celsius and allow it to heat cure the, uh, the PDMS uh, for this amount of time. Uh, for about close to you know um, 
tens of minutes, so that the PDMS achieves a glass like structure on the top. So, now you have not only a ridge like structure on the PDMS, but you are making the ridge like structure very glassy, so that you can actually uh, be able to replicate that glassy structure onto another layer of PDMS. So, we now the next step would be using the same desiccator for uh, whatever glassy surface has been obtained, we will like to replicate that surface. So, we have to use a mold release agent on that surface. So, now we will be actually taking on the, the PDMS structure and uh, using the desiccator okay, uh, as we showed before in the last experiment when we were doing this replication of the uh, PMMA mold. This is that PDMS with a ridge like pattern as you are seeing here and uh, we have to this is glassy also because you have heat cured this whole surface. So, it has become glassy. So, now you actually put the glassy pattern uh, inside the desiccator okay, and heat cure this with uh, sorry the uh, and chemically chemically treat this with HMDS uh, hexamethyl disilazine. So, that again the glassy surface of the PDMS that has been created can be coated with uh, suitable hydrophilic hydrophobic layer. So, the HMDS normally comes in small ampules and the uh, a very good idea for uh, the, the process to take place mostly this process has to be in a sort of you know uh, vacuum uh, in a sort of laminar flow hood like condition. And uh, this uh, vapor has to be somehow bleeded out of this desiccator again into the exhaust output of the, uh, the, the laboratory. So, this is an ampule. So, you have to very carefully uh, crush the ampule. Okay, and uh, uh, keep this ampule inside the uh, desiccator. Okay, and uh, uh, then close the desiccator, and turn the desiccator on so that. Uh, whatever environment is being created here would uh, remain for some time and there would be treatment based on that environment. So, you can switch on the vacuum okay, from the pump uh, which will make the desiccator stable and uh, now the idea is that you can make you know this has become under vacuum as you can see and whatever vapors are being generated by the HMDS now are going to fill this whole chamber up here and they are going to sit on that PDMS mold that we had created the ridge like film that we had created and they are going to actually uh, make the surface the glassy surface of the PDMS ridge uh, hydrophobic. Okay, so, that you can use this for subsequently another molding step following this. In the meantime you start preparing the, uh, the, the PDMS mix again for the second round of replication. Remember now you have to do the, uh, the, the ridge which has been formulated in the last step to another channel now. So, it is uh, the negative of a negative that you want to formulate. So, here now you prepare the PDMS mix as in the next step. So, you use that same process of uh, measuring uh, by weight and you know there is a mold box again a sacrificial mold box being used and uh, you will be using this, uh, this commercial brand available uh, for PDMS uh, by uh, you know mixing two phases which is the resin matrix along with the curing agent. Okay. And uh, this would actually uh, be in a ratio of 10 is to 1 so that by weight, so that you can have proper uh, functionality like curing time etcetera. Again the curing time is uh, realized by making, um, uh, by heat treating uh, the, 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 the PDMS to a higher temperature. Okay. And so, you can make the curing time shorter and shorter based on what is the amount of heat that is flowing into the system. Heat is like a catalyzer which would be able to cross bond the resin matrix 
uh, and the curing agent okay premixed resin matrix and the curing agent so you basically measure and uh, uh, try to zero the weight and uh, then you can pour both uh, the components okay So you have now poured the PDMS. Okay, now you'll pour the uh, the curing agent to exactly one tenth the weight. So you tear the system again and put 2.07 grams. while keeping a, an eye on the monitor, uh, giving the weight measurement of this particular weighing balance. So you can actually pour exactly about one tenth, which is about two grams in this particular case, over the 20.7 grams of resin matrix, which has been poured earlier. A good idea sometimes is also to use a dropper in this particular case so that you can have exactly uh, the amount which is being uh, used. Okay? And so therefore now you have a premixed sample of uh, resin and uh, uh, PDMS which would now be doing the, the mixing with uh, a normal uh, stirring process okay? using a clean stirrer. So in laboratories where sterile are not easily available, etc., also you can use the uh, a, a clean glass slide, you know, to sort of mix both the uh, PDMS as well as the curing agent. But the only thing you have to ensure is the glass slide should be uh, clean uh, out of a packet, okay, and. Uh, you ensure that the, the proper mixability is there. So while doing the mixing, there is an entrapment of all the bubbles okay, within the, the PDMS because it's a viscous fluid and it has uh, some inertial delays. So wherever there is a, um, a scope, there is a tendency of the air bubbles to sort of get blocked and it doesn't come out that easily, which involves you know, the use of a subsequent desiccation step, <coughs> uh, which I have already illustrated earlier. So now the mold box is treated and ready okay the vapor has all been coated on the surface of this particular mold box as well as the uh, the P the pdms uh, membrane which had the ridge like feature okay and now you pour uh, the uh, the pdms on the top of this particular uh, ridge like mold box this is a premixed resin curing agent matrix pour it in a manner so that it covers the entire pattern okay and there is a little bit of pdms remaining on uh, the top which defines the film thickness that you would eventually need to use on the top of this material so you can see already a lot of bubbles being entrapped on the surface of this uh, uh, the pdms and the idea is that you have to have some desiccation and some other steps so that these bubbles can be somehow gotten rid of so that you can have a clear uh, matrix a visibly clear matrix of pdms in this particular zone
Uh, there is always a uh, sticking layer of PDMS to the bottom of the, the box. So, it is a good idea probably to use whatever is left over ok. And uh, because this was by weight that you had made envisioning certain height and dimensions of the, uh, the final uh, shape of the replica ok. And so, therefore, it is a uh, uh, worthwhile really to uh, sort of scrape off all the PDMS which was sticking to the surface of the box. So, that you could actually pour this on the top of the mold as is shown in this particular illustration. after the degassing step and I did not want to show the intermediate steps, but the, the PDMS has uh, gone through that process of thermal curing ok. So, you have uh, a completely rubberized matrix, but somewhere down the line here in the bottom of this particular area you have the mold box. So, you have to now do the separation process and the retrieval of the replicated portion from the mold box and for that uh, you basically do the same operations you cleave this box on the sides ok using uh, ordinary paper cutter and try to first retrieve the the PDMS the rubbery PDMS from the, the mold box. You can see that you know uh, it is sort of uh, the it is come out quite easily actually and you can actually uh, trim off all the edges of this uh, material this uh, material has to be cut and cleaved in the area which contains essentially the device part. The device part is quite visible, uh, but although because you know now it is a PDMS over PDMS, uh, the visibility has reduced a little bit because of the uh, identical uh, nature of the refractive indices of both the materials, but you tentatively know where exactly you have placed this device. You use a pre cleaned glass slide ok to sort of try to uh, use this as a jig to cut the uh, PDMS straight ok. Uh, you, you can see that you know we, we are trying to lay off uh, by creating a hard surface. Over which we will put this PDMS mold and then use a glass slide as a guiding jig for uh, the purpose of cutting off or scraping off the excess PDMS ok. So, we can actually now um, make impressions. So, that we are sort of trimming off the edge and trying to separate out the material which is not useful from uh, the mold material ok which is somewhere inside and in a similar manner uh, you can do it on all the other sides or all the other edges ok by trimming them off. So, this is essentially trimming off another edge and so only that portion which will enclose or which would be containing the device will have to be retrieved from the whole stamp of the PDMS and this can be seen in this particular illustration. similar chunk of the material can be removed from the other side.
So, now you have a piece a central piece where you have you know the two sort of uh, the replica containing PDMS and the PDMS which has been replicated just sitting one on the top of other okay. and then the hard process of sort of retrieving both comes to now remember there is a glassiness of the surface which allows the easy retrieval of both the surfaces okay. as you can see here there is a retrieval of one surface. So, now we want to retrieve both the surfaces and you can see the, the mass you we are trying to slowly separate you know the, the, the two surfaces together one being glassy it gets very easily separated and uh, the irreversible seal which is formulated between uh, the replicated layer and the one which is the replica layer okay, uh, the mold layer uh, those uh, get you know they you have to really remove it carefully. So, that such a reversible seal may not be able to reversible seal may not be able to cause a damage uh, of the replicated layer okay, uh, while retrieval from the, the replica or the mold layer. Okay. So, you can see how carefully so all the edges have to be trimmed off and how carefully the retrieval process takes place. So, you can now see both the layers sitting parallel to each other and I would just like to now take off. So, you can see that how this layer is coming off uh, you know and very carefully you have now separated both the layers. Okay. So, now the layer which has been formulated uh, right here okay, is a replica of the ridge which was on this particular side which we had done earlier through the earlier processing steps and it is actually a channel okay. and this channel can be easily used for microfluidic applications because you can actually bond this particular surface containing the channel to a glass piece. And before doing the bonding you can actually with a small syringe needle laboratory syringe needle prick a small inlet outlet holes on both uh, the sides okay, so that there is a easy transference of fluids and you can that way connect the, the fluidic device to the external world. Okay. And so, uh, you can typically do this drilling process by very slowly twisting the, the needle, so that a straight path of the channel can be created okay, till it goes to the other side. Okay. So, you have now needles pricking holes on both sides of this device. Fantastic thing about this is it is a rubbery material. So, whatever uh, small channel has been created across the thickness of this PDMS can be easily uh, cut this channel okay, or cut this, uh, cut this uh, port in the thickness of the PDMS. The advantage of PDMS is that it is a highly elastic material. So, therefore, if you put a small piping or a tubing uh, inside this uh, drilled hole, uh, there is always a tendency of a self seal to happen between the uh, thickness of the PDMS and that pipe or channel. Uh, uh, the, that my the uh, tube and therefore, you can easily in a very leak proof manner handle fluids uh, into this small structure which has been embedded on the bottom of this PDMS layer okay, and closed subsequently by a glass wafer. A similar uh, drilling is done on the other side for ensuring that the, uh, the device is connected to you know an inflow and outflow port. So, you now have actually a uh, device with inlet outlet ports. Okay. We want to irreversibly bond this uh, wafer by exposing it to plasma oxygen plasma. This is a Herrick plasma asher which is uh, very commonly available in laboratory to uh, in order to make a RF you know in a magnetically enhanced laboratory level plasmas. And you have a uh, clean glass slide which you are placing with respect to this PDMS piece here right here with the replication on the top okay, the pattern on the top and you are exposing it to oxygen plasma uh, because you want to introduce the uh, hydrophilicity of the surface. So, that there is irreversible bonding between one side of the PDMS replicated side of the PDMS and the lower glass plate okay. and uh, these are some procedures associated with how the plasma system is operated you have uh, going in the power on mode and then there is a uh, vacuuming step which is there. So, this plasma chamber is now um, connected with the vacuum okay. and uh, 
basically you can look through these holes here to see if the plasma has been obtained. Plasma is like a flame, you will be able to see on this particular uh, you know through these viewing windows or this viewing galleries and uh, the moment the plasma is formulated you wait for a certain amount of exposure time in this case it can be very low amount of exposure time close to about 30 seconds or so from the formulation of the plasma uh, and this you can measure using a stopwatch. Okay. Uh, the plasma typically is uh, formulated after switching on the magnetic uh, circuit or the, the magnetic coil and waiting for some close to few seconds, tens of seconds. So, waiting for a few minutes till the plasma actually gets generated. You will just about start to see the glow coming out of these holes shortly. So, you can see the glow come. Okay, the plasma glow has come now and you wait for about close to 30 seconds after this glow is there and that ensures that your process is fully completed. This is how it actually looks like the tube is all lighting up with the plasma as you can see. So, as this plasma process is complete uh, we can retrieve we can switch off the plasma. Okay and take out uh, the samples. And then quickly uh, overlay the pattern side of the PDMS to the exposed wafer surface. Okay. This is very important because you know you know you should know what is the pattern size of the PDMS because you are trying to close that size for doing side for doing microfluidic delivery. So, you have a microfluidic device now. Okay where you can do flow control on the surface of this uh, this uh, PDMS. Okay. Uh, you can put the inlet outlet ports on both sides of this drilled holes that we had done earlier and so therefore, you can have a very good uh, flow channel uh, which may be only defined by the feature size that was there on the uh, laser wafer or laser made PMMA uh, substrate which was only a few microns. Okay. So, here we can do some characterization uh, of this micro channel using um, fluorescence microscope or in the optical field uh, using the bright field option. So, here you can actually see how this channel uh, would typically look like. Uh, this is how the uh, microscope has been focused on to this channel. Okay. So, you can actually get some good images and this microscope has a scale. So, it can do some metrology as well. You can actually get a very good illustration of what are the various widths of the device which are obtained uh, over this particular uh, channel. So, you can actually measure from between any two places okay, on a scale which is definable by the magnification lens or the, 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 the magnification factor on the lens that you are using.